Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, any youngers, it's me, Jen Glantz. We are back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My goodness gracious, today I wanted to talk about a topic that I love and hate. Yep, maybe you've guessed it. It's social media. I have been in this weird social media trance of anger. I can't go on Instagram without feeling my blood boil lately. And it's just a crazy, crazy, crazy feeling. A part of me is just is so fed up because a lot of what I'm seeing isn't real. Yet it's very hard for me to realize it's not real. I see people who I know are struggling or going through so much pain posting these photoshopped images of themselves with these catchy little captions letting the world think that their lives are perfect. And I'm not saying you have to air your dirty laundry. I'm definitely not saying that, but I'm also saying that you do not have to pretend. And a lot of what I'm seeing on social media are people pretending, and I want you to know you can stop. It seems like every time I hang out with a friend or I talk to a person, they just tell me that they feel this immense pressure to live a certain kind of life because of what they see on social media. And I'm guilty of this too, forgetting that a lot of what we see isn't real. It's just a tiny little fraction of somebody's life that you're seeing up there. You're not seeing the phone calls that make them cry. You're not seeing the emails they read at work that make them stressed out. You're not seeing what happens when they go home at night, turn on Netflix, and just contemplate what the heck their purpose is in this world. And it's painful because we forget that so incredibly easy. I've been thinking so much about social media and, and we forget that it's just more, it's, it's nothing more than a highlight reel of people's lives. It's just a tiny fraction of what they're choosing to tell us. And I'll be honest with you, people like to see and hear good stuff. Like they like to see happy things and pretty things and honest things. But as long as those honest things are motivational, sad things, people don't want to go on social media to see that. I live so much of my life on social media and I post there because I want to. I want to let you in on that fraction of my life, but I also feel like I've had to be on social media so intensely because of the pressure. I've had book proposals die in the hands of publishers who told me that they loved my writing, but not the tiny following I had on social media. I remember six, seven years ago, the first nonfiction book I was trying to sell, everyone loved, but they said I needed 10,000 followers on Twitter. This came back to haunt me because a major TV network passed over the final stage of my reality show pilot for Bridesmaid for Hire. Like They were deciding between my show and another show, and the only reason they passed over it, because I did not have 100,000 followers on Instagram. The producers called me and said, what can you do fast to go from 6,000 followers to 100,000 followers? And I literally put the phone on mute and said, you have to be kidding me. Bridesmaid for Hire is a cool concept and they're not going to go through with the show. They're instead going to choose another show. And if you knew what show it was over this, you'd be like WTF. They went with that show only because the person had a gigantic following. And I remember I was sitting there and I wanted this reality show so badly. I had worked so hard for it. And the producer said that to me and I'm very hardworking. I'm very determined. So I hung up the phone and I thought, okay, I need, I have two days to drastically improve my social media following. Like I have a better chance of winning the lottery. Okay. So honestly, what I did was I Googled how to buy fake followers. And this was maybe three, four years ago. I bought fake followers, not a hundred thousand, but I bought like maybe 4,000. And let me tell you, it was so dumb. One, it cost me hundreds of dollars. 
Two, when you buy fake followers, you're not buying actual people. You're buying robots that sit in your following count. And what happened was over time, these fake followers were kicked off. They were pushed out. So I lost hundreds of dollars and I didn't even get like following from it. It was just crazy. So that was also really stupid as well. And long story short, they went with the other show. They dropped Bridesmaid for Higher Reality Show. And that was that. And it was really painful and it was really hard to wrap my head around. And I think that, you know, with all the craziness happening in my life, I've taken steps back from social media because it hasn't been right to post positive things when my life hasn't been so positive. And I've let things slip. I've gotten real. I posted things that were more honest, but not the happy kind of honest, the real honest that sometimes can make people itch with discomfort. I've had people actually sit me down, look me in the eye, and tell me that I'm coming off as a little sad on social media, and because of that, they think I should stop posting on social media. And <laughs> wow, right? I mean, it's, it's so crazy that to be accepted, to have a platform, to stand out, you have to maintain this fakeness to you and to what's happening in your life. And I don't think that's real. And I don't think that's right. A couple of years ago, right before my, my book came out, Always Surprise Me for Hire, like three days before, my Instagram was hacked and deleted. And why was it hacked and deleted? Because I bought fake followers and they had access to my account. So double whammy of what the hell, right? And all of my photos, I think I had, oh my God, how many photos did I have? I might have had like a thousand photos were deleted. And I remember feeling so devastated. And I remember thinking to myself, like, this is my whole life. I've invested so much in creating this persona on social media and posting all the time and it's all gone. And I promised myself when I rebuilt my social media, which I did from scratch, you'll notice I only have around like 300 posts because I've re been rebuilding for years. I promised myself that I would tell the truth, even if that means people sit me down and tell me that I come off as sad. You know what? Here's the thing. We all have different emotions happening in our lives. And if you are going to be on social media and if you are going to follow people, then you should know all of the dimensions of their lives. And the truth is nobody has to know your truth. They don't have to know everything. But the truth is we got to stop pretending. You, my friend, don't have to get out of bed in the morning and brush your hair for anyone. You don't have to drop a photo of you with teenage acne scars waving hello on your face into an editing tool to smooth out the marks that are a part of who you are. You don't have to post a photo of yourself with a caption that makes it seem like, you know, you're just standing there happy when really you're downplaying the fact that there you are, you mighty human being looking and feeling great. There's no need to pretend. Dish out your truth however much you want, even if it's a side dish that's served without the main course. And just so you know, people will find solace in your honesty, in your sadness, in your realness. And that is my social media rant for you today. My friends, come hang out with me if you want on Instagram. You might see some sad stuff, but it's real stuff. My handle is at Jen Glanz, and of course, the handle for this podcast is at any younger. I hope to see you there, and as always, come hang out with us in the realest place on the internet, the You're Not Getting Any Younger secret Facebook group, and finally, how about a review on iTunes? It takes 10 seconds. Look down below at your phone, hit the five stars, write a review. Oh, it means so much. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glance.